There's a reason Walt Disney works primarily with cartoons. Since the birth of film, visual effects have been limited by the technology of its time. But with animation, you could escape those limits, experimenting with what is not normally possible. But this came at a price. Many of the people attracted to animation were too creative for their own good, and their works turned out surprisingly creepy. Because parents generally don't want their children scared, those disturbing cartoons were largely unsuccessful. These days, they are almost entirely forgotten. So I thought I'd make a video about that, because I'm a creep myself, and I have a feeling most of my viewers are creeps too. One of the cartoons that scared children the most was Cobweb Hotel. Released in 1936, it tells the story of a spider with an ingenious way of trapping flies. Opening a fake hotel, flies come willingly to stay the night, but once there, the spider traps them in his web. There's something about the trap fly screaming in fear that upset viewers. The spider's creepy voice didn't help either, or just the nightmarish nature of the cartoon in general. <laughs> in the end, the flies are able to escape the bloodthirsty spider, but that did little to stop it traumatizing viewers. Interestingly, the hotel is said to be on the desk of Dave Fleischer, the cartoon's creator. Also in the 1930s, creepy cartoons were being produced in Japan. One of them tells the story of a shape-shifting fox, who takes on the form of a samurai. He then decided to visit a nearby temple, which turned out to be haunted by the ghost of a raccoon. None of it makes much sense, and the grainy sound and bleak animation have given a lot of people nightmares. I don't really understand what's going on most of the time. At one point, the samurai has a gun, but as you'd expect, that doesn't do much to a ghost. So in the end, he's killed. It's very strange, but it is based on traditional folklore, so there's that. And let's be honest, it's still less creepy than a lot of modern Japanese animation. Yet another country to produce creepy cartoons in the 1930s was the Soviet Union. Many were based on old Russian folktales, like this one, which is called The Tale of the Priest and His Workman Boulder. It's unclear when exactly it was made, the husband and wife animation team behind it had to keep stopping and starting, since the 1930s was not an easy time for Soviet media figures. In the end, they somehow finished their dream project, but there was a major problem. Everyone was terrified of it. Considering it tells the story of an evil priest who manipulates a poor worker, and is then beaten into a state of insanity, it was always going to be dark, but the animators went overboard and scared everyone and then a lucky disaster struck. During World War II, when Russia was heavily bombed, fire spread throughout the major cities. This film, like many others, was destroyed as archives burned. To this day, it remains a lost film. What you're seeing now is part of the four minutes that survived the fire.
It is likely everyone who saw the full cartoon is now dead, and I feel weird saying that. So let's move on. Balloonlands did not immediately strike me as creepy. At first, I thought it was just weird. A place made entirely of balloons, including the people who live there. So many things in Balloonlands look like dicks, but that was probably inevitable. But then somebody shows up who not only is not made of balloon, but actually hates balloons. He is Pincushion Man, a pervert who goes around bursting balloons with giant pins. Popping balloons might not sound that bad, but considering the inhabitants of his town are made of balloon, what he's attempting is clearly genocide. The Pincushion Man! In time, balloon police were able to run him out of town, but by that time, Pincushion Man had committed terrible war crimes. It's unlikely Balloonlands would ever recover from the loss of population. Scenes from the cartoon have since been used in multiple horror movies. To me, Balloonland is more weird than creepy, but to be fair, I'm not a young child. I never was and never will be. Open the gates, I want to come in! Oh, <laughs> I'd better not. The folks would blow up if I let you in. Nonsense! From the same two brothers who produced Cobweb Hotel, Swing You Sinners is six years older. Inspired by the popular song Sing You Sinners, it tells the story of a mischievous dog. First, he tries to kidnap a chicken for some reason, but when a police officer turns up, he finds refuge in a nearby graveyard. From here, it morphs from a normal, playful cartoon to a more sinister one. Trapped within the graveyard as if by magic, the tombstones begin to sing to him, threatening that he will never leave. If you break down the lyrics to this little song, they actually threaten to pulverise him and scatter his bones. It's like the cemetery is one big ghost pulling him in. At one point, the cemetery walls grow smaller, until totally encircling the dog, and then it somehow gets even more surreal. Escaping the walls, he jumps into some kind of barn. Basically, everything inside it tries to kill him, and a strange disjointed chicken torments him. When ghosts arrive and literally pull a razor on the dog, he finally decides to leave. But by that time, even the barn itself is angry, chasing him through the cemetery. It's not long before an army of ghosts is chasing the dog, the situation getting ever more nightmarish. And just like that, the cartoon ended. Cartoons in those days were less geared towards children. Adults would regularly go and see them in theatres, but even adults were disturbed by Swing You Sinners, 